It has been 4 months since I had left the chemistry lab and YouTube. There is a college entry exam that most of the high school students and repeaters take. Its purpose is to line up all the 55,000 students and show what level of college you can go. So I had to study for this big exam and now it's over, I'm back on YouTube. This was shot on the first day that I returned to the lab. During the preparation, I had a lot of thoughts about what content should I do and this is one of them. This is just a demo version and checking if this method really works so it's not a complete tutorial. I'm currently mixing sulfuric acid with silica gel. This is to make silica sulfuric acid and to use it for the catalyst of esterification reaction. You might ask why you use the silica sulfuric acid for a catalyst if you already have concentrated sulfuric acid. But actually silica sulfuric acid have pretty decent advantages. First, it is possible to make silica sulfuric acid with low concentration sulfuric acid. Fissure esterification suffers from water contamination because the product can be decomposed in the presence of water. So you need to use highly concentrated sulfuric acid like 95 or 98. But you can use low concentration of sulfuric acid for making silica sulfuric acid. So it would be a good use for chemists that don't have access to concentrated sulfuric acid. Second, silica sulfuric acid is a solid acid, meaning that it can be reused. And it is easier for students to handle. 98% sulfuric acid, for example, is syrupy liquid and it's pretty hard to handle a liquid with this viscosity. The color becomes black as we react it further, and I think it is the contaminant from the mortar that was used in powdering silica. After 1 hour of heating at 180 degrees Celsius, water do evaporate, but not that much, so I just proceeded the experiment. In this esterification, I used acetic anhydride and ambutyl alcohol for ambutyl acetate, which has a smell of apple and banana. On the round bottom flask, I put all the slurry silica sulfuric acid mix and washed the beaker with 30 ml of acetic anhydride. Next, 23 ml of ambutyl alcohol is added dropwise. I used the dripping funnel and you can see that I didn't fully joint the dripping funnel because the joint was hindered by the slurry silica sulfuric acid. After all the addition, I heated the whole mixture at 75 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. After heating for 20 minutes, 30 ml of ice cold water was added and transferred to the separatory funnel. Round bottom flask was washed with 50 ml of water. Separatory funnel is shaken and vented. After the layer is separated, lower aqueous layer is discarded. Then add saturated sodium bicarbonate solution to neutralize remaining acid. This is important because you don't want your ester to smell like vinegar. Again, lower layer is discarded. Get here the best please. Brown butyl acetate is transferred to 250 ml round bottom flask and distilled. Butyl acetate has boiling point of 126 degrees Celsius, but I think the thermal unit is not working correctly. When the thermometer's increasing rate slowed down, I changed my vial and started to collect a pure and butyl acetate. 
the thermometer was off, so the thing that I collected was not the O. By measuring the weight of each fire from the left, we got 16.1, 17.6, and 18.2. The weight of each fire itself was 11.1 gram per each, so we got a total of 18.3 grams of butyl acetate. The theoretical yield is 27.8, so we got the yield about 66%. This is not a complete guide and I'm working on it. This is part of the esterification project and next topic will be about overcoming low yield fissure esterification by using suction extractor and molecular sieves. So stay tuned and thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.